Right, so we are now about to record. You'll see top left hand corner there. So <clears throat> these uh, go on to the web afterwards, of course. Uh, just give that a minute to work itself out. Say that's recording at this end. Is it? There we go. All right, yeah, and I've got the symbol there now too. Cool. All right. Well, uh, greetings, uh, one and all. We've got a, a new time, I think, Stephen. This is the regular slot, isn't it? Uh, shifting to a Monday, I think, at your request. Um, yep. So let's see how that goes. Uh, and um, hopefully that fits in with people's schedules as well. Um, greetings, one and all. Um, we are in uh, Stephen hands to kick off, of course. So um, mm -hmm. uh, no delay. I shall hand to you, Stephen. Okay, I'm just going to share my share my screen. Uh, be with, be with. So now I've got a, the first page of the presentation. Is that what everyone's seeing? Oh, cool. Um, who's here? So was it Charlie? Yep, John, see down the side, yeah, Hugh and Ella I can't see it. as well, Chris. Oh, cool. Well, thanks everyone for coming. I just appreciate everyone bearing with us on this drawn out sort of process, but we just really are just trying to move this along a little bit. And today I just picked four things that I just wanted to cover. Um, Part A is just to go over some, some of the, the process of the MCA scoring, which is, has started. Second, part B, just to give an update on where we're going with the public land option. We had some good talk about that last month. Um, C, just some additional concerning elements where that's going. And D, just to hand it over to others for a, a bit of a wrap up. So the first part, the MCA scoring process. So last, last, um, last week, I, s I presented the schedule of, of where, we, where, where the, the, the scoring process was going and the different sort of criteria that were to be um, an L, uh, um, to undertake the scoring of one to 10. The crunchy part is the, is the weighting that goes on each of them, but first, at the, in the first instance, just getting the scoring done is a, is a great achievement. Um, so those columns that we, that we went over last week were public health, environment, cultural, social and community, sustainability, constructability, technology, opportunities and statutory. And they, will, they won't all be um, given the, the same weighting. There's the last QMARA, there was greater weighting given to public health, environment and cultural. Um, but that's still a discussion to be had. But for this one, I just put the first page of the, the notes that were up on the web now just to just to talk about the first the first um, column, which is public health. So, in the pub, the public health, this is one that really um, needs expert scoring, which is um, that it's to do with the first three three cells. There talk about the um, analyzing the effects, the adverse effects, which you do by way of microbial um, quantitative microbial risk analysis. So that's um, just thinking about waterborne pathogens, et cetera, and how that's going to, um, although there's, there's low risk, there is, there is risks. So that's where we've, we've engaged two, two groups of, of people to, to, to do that. And that's the same with all these types of applications. And this is what WRC expect, and it's what's needed for the um, thorough adverse, um, assessment of adverse environmental effects. So this is these. This reporting has just come through. It's quite fresh, and I'm going to have to um, read it a couple more times. But the the reports are, are to 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 complete the QMRA are dual. There's um, there's modelling of the of the of the harbour, which is I needed some enhanced modelling because we already had a calibrated harbour model through our prior work when we looked at the outfall. We needed to 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 create a bigger model for the freshwater option. And that was done by John Oldman, who's a, who lives in Raglan, he's from DHI. He works closely with Chris Data, who his firm's called QMRA Data Experts. He's a, um, 
he's they work close together and he actually performed the the, the analysis of it so the analysis it's just a comparison of options against against each other and I'll just show you on the next slide um, the different the different sort of areas that were considered but on this slide I'll just highlight the the methodology that they use for each spot there's a, an individual illness risk analysis either at a recreational or shelf gathering site and with each scenario they'll um, it'll have a summary and it's and it's the magnitude beyond the no um, it's measured as a magi the magnitude beyond the no observed adverse effect level so for this project we had some existing um, sites which are just R for recreation S which we and S for shellfish gathering we, we we did this through prior engagement and and meetings just using local knowledge um, getting a fair idea of where things happen these were just um, looked closer and it formed part of Chris's Chris's model um, with it they what Chris did was take the dilutions that occurred through the DHA DHI um, Harbour model to understand flow and 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 um, and depths. So in the first instance, this this just shows what what John produced. This shows the um, scenario one, which is just the, the new the new outfall. I mean, an outfall and the public land disposal um, during the January and March, and it just shows a, a very high dilution. I can't quite. You might be able to see the percent dilution, but it's 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 very it's very dilute. And when you go when you go to the um, the fresh water model, which with the harp, which the the revised modelling looked more in the in the harbour, and that you'll see that it's just um, in the in the inner harbour. It isn't it isn't um it's it's a lot less dilute, and it just um doesn't get a chance to flush out. So much, and there's even some some quite undiluted um, up near the Wainui stream. So with this work, um, reading between the lines, you can this before we were talking about the the freshwater option and the significance of the stream for Enanga spawning, and that it's a healthy stream. This is another sort of um, analysis that really that really shows how challenging a freshwater option would be in the harbour with a with a very high with it with an MBR. Basically the the um the treated wastewater would 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 hang, would um be within the harbour network for, for a long time wouldn't flush out. So it's it's yeah it, it does not boding well for that for that option. But it was just it was good for um at least there's something behind the solid science that the regional council will be needing for their assessment and they'll review it. So with the um, so with this with this dilution, he was able. Uh, Chris, who's doing the QMRA, was able to to uh, under to look at the different types of of treatment, be it um, the an, M an MBR and UV or a membrane and UV, and consider the and consider the um, the achievable log virus reductions associated with each each of these treatments. Is able to rank the scenarios and in, in the magnitude of no observe observable. Uh, what was that acronym? No observed adverse effects level, which is the QMRA standard. His basic, his general, his general um, statement was the estimated um, IIR, IIR profiles. Um, generally varied within sites, but were well below the, the the null for most of the exposure sites across all tested treatment and discharge scenarios. But it was M2 and L4 were among the best. So just sort of circle that, and those you'll see those are the MBR and the UV. Um, and he's given us he's given us scoring, and so as part of the scoring, it will never for the options for a column. It just highlights that the L2 was 100% to land, so that will get a 10 and then the ranking goes down thereafter with the lowest being the freshwater option being a three. So with the the top options, it was saying that the, um, 
the intestinal risk would be 700 times under the, the no observable adverse effects level. Febrile respiratory illness, 20 times under. Raw shellfish consumption, 20 times under. So the risk, the dilution is very low, risk is low, but the, the consequence is high with, with um, human pathogens versus other sort of things happening in the harbour like stormwater that isn't, that isn't talking about no, norovirus, it's a human-borne pathogen. So this is the type of work we're working through now, and we're getting more information through. Um, with the MBR, there's again there's, there's more balancing to occur with other with other columns, which I haven't just been able to get through at the moment. But for constructability and sustainability, there's a very high carbon footprint for MBR construction with chemicals, concrete, and others. So it would score lower in that. And this is this is the balancing that's needed to to get a best practical option, and what the regional council expects to see. And above all, this isn't even got the la the financial lens that doesn't come into the uh, the assessment of adverse effects. Who we? So that was that was just one part of the work we've done the last month. I'll have those reports up on the website soon, and I'm hoping John will read them because it's great to have that sort of scrutiny and discussion. Stephen, do you want to, um, I know we normally take questions at the end, but I think there's quite a separate section coming up now. Do you want to break for questions at this point? Yeah, for sure. Because you're right, John will not disappoint you. He has two already. Ah, oh, John. <laughs> there you go, John. Yeah, so um, the first one was how do the flow models compare with the ones done by eCoast. I don't know if you've seen the video that they did, but they did a video showing the tide going in and out several times and the pollution gradually spreading around the harbour as it sloshed backwards and forwards. Whereas this one looks from what I briefly saw as though it just goes out and doesn't take account of the in and out movement. Uh, am I right or wrong? Yes, yeah, so with the, with the um... With this one, it, it shows the, um, it, it takes, it's not the existing stub that's being being monitored, it's the, the, the newly constructed, I mean, the, the enhanced option, which would be 100, would be actually secured to the bottom with a diffuser. Uh, it's out further. Um, I'm not quite sure what the ECOS does, the ECOS model showed, but I'm, I can get back to, to John yeah. Oldman, have you? You know, I'm around, I think the question, though, Stephen, is, 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 is it a dynamic model? And, yeah, we run time series through this. We run a continuous time series, and we see the tides moving in and out. It would probably be a similar type model to what ECOS does, John. Yeah. Um, so question two was the, uh, again, I didn't have time to read it properly, but it looked from the list in front of us as though the MCA advice doesn't seem to cover uh, the land only option is that because it, it's not actually going to water so it's not being assessed or what's the story yeah there was there wasn't anything with the land that's 100 percent to to land i guess there'll be other there'll be, if, if that's where we go with the mca like one of the two um best practical options would be a greater study to make sure that there's i mean to to, to talk about how you avoid the the risk of um, over overload, etc., or making its way into the harbour. The moment, though, there wasn't there was anything to assess it's to land. Thank you. And I see that probably Axel has put a message saying, "Does anyone else want to put questions in the chat?" But unless you open the chat, you can't see what's happening there. So. Okay, yeah, so really, <laughs> thank you, John. Uh, yeah, so any other questions on this section? There is a, a, another section to come, but, and we'll certainly uh, can circle back at the end if need be. Yep, okay, carry on, Stephen. Okay. So the next part was just to, to, to just give you an update of what has happened the last month in terms of the public land option. This is... Um, but the the inlet, I've just put the last the last month's slide. Um, 
we have circle to seeking power nui omaha engineering input so that's advanced now we've got um the 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 engineer and designer engaged now just to to really have a have a good look at this this project and just see um just just get a lens on whether is anything similar achievable here what are we what are we doing and and let us and please help <laughs> sort of to say we've got some bits of land that all have challenges and but we just need to have a theoretical look at it um the we talked about last week that the, last month the the airstrip in itself it's just we're in, in a stage of knowledge building there's going to be lots of with history there it's sort of just to really understand in a perfect world could this be used for any discharge and it's the same with the the, the public land, there isn't um, a heap of public land and the, and the most obvious one that's been looked at in the past and other consenting scenarios is the Wainui Reserve. Again, this the, the picture I put on there was just the theoretical picture from PDP. It needs to be ground truthed more. There's lots of competing activities and even the ability to, to, um, to put any discharge or use it for any sort of cut and carry or any sort of farming will take some courageous discussions with between council internally um, with advice from our experts which we'll just have to work through with Ian and, and councillor about the best method to go about it and talk to the right people. Um, I know that the reserve management plan uh, has just been gone through some public meetings and submissions and again, that was a, an opportunity just to look at what the reserve management plan had in, had in respect to farming. Basically, it was just talking about livestock. So the the scenario, the the submission I made in behalf of the the project team was just to consider other parts of farming as well, which is is cropping and food production. I know that there were some other submissions from others that talked about the the, the farming. I know Charlie, uh, Red Charlie's and Skim some others. So again. Give us a quick sec. We're going. We're hoping to get Peter down the next week or two and really just just analyse it in a way of a workable scenario and enable these discussions to occur. We can have a quick stop there as well, Councillor. If you take any questions. Uh, yep. In fact, we have a, a question from uh, from Chris around the use of the Public Works Act and. Um, effectively whether that's available to use. I can probably answer that. I'll have a first go, Chris. Um, had a little bit of experience with that being used, mainly to take uh, land for roads. Um, so it's it's really in the situation where you've got a very reluctant um, you know, uh, landowner who effectively doesn't want to sell, has been given the opportunity to sell, uh, or perhaps they... Um, fundamentally disagree with the valuation that's um, <clears throat> that's been obtained. Um, you know, w whether it's a fa fair market valuation or whether they just feel it's worth more to them. Um, and uh, so it is possible uh, for for uh, initiatives or, or to, to in, uh, activate a solution that's of, of high community interest and value. But the hurdle is high. The hurdle is very high, and uh, we've got a legal system going back to the Magna Carta that that looks at you know effectively the protection of you know a, a man's home as his castle sort of thing. Um, so there's very very strong protection around property rights, and if the person is reluctant, uh, it's um, it's yeah it's a long and expensive process. Um, but by agreement, uh, you can do pretty much anything. Uh, so, the, so the key here is to identify uh, effectively, you know, which is what Stephen's done, talking to landowners, talking about long-term plans, and are there people that would, would engage in this on a willing buyer, willing seller, in which case it's, you know, you don't need the Public Works Act and it's um, much easier. But you might use the Public Works Act perhaps to get access for a pipe or something through somebody else's place to get to the, to the to the main part that sort of thing does that uh, yep. give some insight chris yeah no, no that's, that's that answered the question pretty pretty thoroughly thank you any other questions around this this uh, uh part b this is the only slide for part b okay let's rock and roll Stephen, through to part c you sound like you were a lawyer in another life 
<laughs> uh, I, I'm that most dangerous of person. I've I've got a little bit of history, which, and and a, a few examples, which probably don't come at all relate to the current situation. But I'll fearlessly throw it in there anyway. Very very dangerous. It's expensive to clean up afterwards, but um, <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure. No, I'm that was it. Was bang on. It was just I guess the the key the key point you said was the per, the the hurdle is is high, and that's right. If there's other with roading, there's sometimes there isn't any other, other option, and that's why it has to be um, invoked. But with this, you know, there is there is other options, so that makes that's a very high hurdle. Um, so the so the last the last bit that I really have to talk about today was just to highlight where we're going with some of the other and the, um, innovation and and reuse environmental enhancement ideas, which is just just basically trying to really push the working alongside the community and hapu um, offset mitigation and doing some jointly designed sort of project here, which is part of the, the objectives and objectives for this whole project. So giving it a nudge and we just, like the last month's slide I, I put up in that top corner and that was just to talk about the solar innovation space. And so we've actually advanced that a bit further with our eco, manager here and there's a business case that's going to be presented to the um, the water governance board and it's in my mind it's pending approval it's just a win-win that sort of just um, would al allow non um, less resilience to the resilient le le less less reliance on the on the grid for any sort of power use of the plant at the moment there's blowers and others that are high it would take a lot of power this would do that. This would this would cater for that and um, and other and, and any any upgrade as well. It wouldn't be a year round. It wouldn't be a year round when it's winter where there's not not much sun. But it's um it's just working along the lines of what's already happening in Raglan. We went and saw Rick and have a better understand of the solar initiatives that are happening with with Rick. That's Rick is co-leading or as part of. So um so that's hope to have some better news. Have some additional news next time or whenever that gets to go to the, the water governance board. The second part of it is just advancing opportunity to consider um, what uh, just have a joint study on, on, on plants with alongside um, alongside the Tainui, Tainui the, the hapu that's right there at the on the harbour mouth. So it's just to it's just using this this new plant. There isn't much um, Information in New Zealand, we have a, there's a nursery up in up, up in Northland, and it's used successfully in in other parts of the world. Again, it's a it's a sterile plant that has, I think I've talked about it a million times. It can act as a sort of a retaining wall under the under the earth. Um, from a perspective, they're re, they're really cons, really interested in the erosion the the fit with erosion work that they're doing. Um, from but again, from we're just highlighting from from this perspective of the project, it'd be really good to understand if there's some ability for some cultural planning to meet those bottom lines of treated wastewater having to touch Mother Earth to re remove the tapu and make it more of a neutral product for co uh, neutral sort of water for co-mingling. Um, with any sort of natural planting or wetlands, there's always some hesitancy with the the decision maker or the regulatory officer. Um, a regulatory group, which is WDC, because of the past failures with with that sort of with wetlands, etc. Sometimes plants work, sometimes they don't. There's not the certainty that you need for a for a discharge consent. But again, we just again there's in terms of working with our key partner, which is Hapu, um, figuring out some sort of cultural planning that might be a mix of natives. It might just be Bit of it, or it might be no bit of it. It's just it's just a chance to get some tangible um, examples in the ground. So we've did a, a, a very sort of community science approach. Have some space at the Kokiri um, around there. You, you see that picture of this. It's a real. There's a bit of real at risk coastline here, which is um, slowly going into the ocean. That's one part. We're going to plant some. Vetiver, but also within the site, there's another, there's some blob that would just highlight just how it would work on this city, sandy soils, um, dry sandy soils. So we've put the, so working alongside Chloe, who's great, she's the nursery manager at um, at the Kokiri, 
we've just got some had some plants put in uh, ordered and put in at, at the at the kokiri uh, that's the top photo there'll be some additional planning to occur for the erosion part of it just for for them for the for the happy's perspective to understand how, how that may work and contribute to their guardianship and then the bottom photo i've just i've just put in some child plants at matangi irrigation field just to um uh the matangi is a yeah has, has a, has a very small um scheme but it does have an irrigation field that that could be there might be some sort of replication happening with subsurface irrigation if that's the option we go with here um yep so trying and that's probably um my next gets to my next slide it's just a bit of a quick one tonight i've just got the wrap up and queries just thank you uh stephen um did we do any more I, I recall there was quite some discussions um about half a year ago about uh, uh flax as a, as another potential crop to be looked at uh, did did that get looked at at all um yeah i don't there's might have been i can't recall that that conversation <laughs> there, there, there's going to be an intense looking at flex i think it's always we've always just sort of that like the the native and the native planning has, has already been has already known by happy this was just something new so the the vetiver is, is just the only sort of new species the new sort of specimen that's been introduced to the project um so no all right, it was just uh, somebody else might pick it up if um, it just tickled my memory there. I, I just couldn't quite recall where we got to with it. Um, I will go to uh, Chris, though, for tonight's most esoteric question. <laughs> He's gone. Oh, no, there it is. Um, yeah, I'd I like just... to stop uh, sharing, Stephen. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing now. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, someone actually asked me that today. Um, he has been in these meetings before, quite a science background. I forgot his name. But um, yeah, at what point of water treatment, like, and, and is that achievable to get a level of treatment where it's culturally and scientifically no longer considered wastewater? It might not be potable drinking water, but it's no longer got the, um, the nasties in it that make it wastewater. Is that achievable? Is that even is that out of the realms of possibility? Or the the, the from a Western perspective and a and a perspective under the RMA, a bit different from Western side of things. I think that there. I don't know what's Richard. You might be able to help me there. If it's going to be, if it was going to be, you couldn't tell the difference between one or the other. I don't know if you'd ever you'd ever get that. You'd have to do a lot more different treatment. Um, um, the treatment trains we're looking at probably without the running of it through land will will struggle to get EV acceptability. I think that's a fair comment, eh, Steve. From a yeah, Western yeah. perspective, we can get the levels down to be quite what we feel is safe, but we've still got the cultural implications, which we can't avoid. You know, we, we're discharging on that Huppie's back doorstep currently, and and you know the message has been loud and and consistent from that happy so i think from that chris you can say i don't think you know we'd like it to be reconcilable but it's it's been a, a long journey and i doubt it but there is one treatment option we are looking at which to do with the airfield but we aren't we're very very early days the race steve which 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 yeah. which may may crack that here. Is this but the MABR? No, this is this is probably until we you know we've only just engaged this guy and I think we're better off to report next week of if it's re even a go because yeah. we've been down quite a few rabbit holes already in this project. You know the freshwater one we pinned our hopes on and, and we were disappointed. And, and so let's just let that one roll out, I think, eh, Stephen? You know, because yeah. it, it, it could yeah. just turn to nothing, but we're hopeful that there's a potential there. That's all we can say, really, eh, Steve? Yeah, but that's, that's right. I mean, you're thinking about the MA, 
the uh, like we showed on the, the other the other sort of um, the QMA QMARA analysis, it did it did the the filtration there does lessen. It's the best for removing yeah. the, the, the the pathogens. Um, again, it's, that's one aspect of it. MABR we sort of have to consider nitrogen and phosphorus as well, and they're more of a fresh. fresh that they're given great great consideration that in, in freshwater environment, lesser in in the in the um in the estuarine environment. Yeah. Est yeah are, in you, are, you, are you talking about an MBAR plant, Chris? You've sort of heard that word, or you? So we've got lots of things like QMRAs, which is our quantitative microbial assessment, and then we've got some technology which we are looking at, which would probably do um, similar removal to um, an MBR. I know it's MABR and MBR sound the same, but they're quite different processes, and we're currently, Ian can probably fill you in a little bit, he's He's been told probably more that water care are trialling that technology up at our mm. innovation centre in Mungary currently, but in parallel we're we're planning on using it at our Te Calfrey plant when we upgrade that. And and it, we're it's early days before the trial, but that that technology would just bring the cost down on on um, opex and on the capital expenditure probably roughly by about thirty percent on each cost. So yeah. it's it's a tech, that's a side issue. Do you want to talk button yeah, there? In? Just on that, yeah. But, and there's also a lowering of the carbon footprint as well, which is quite significant. So when yeah. you put that into the scheme, it's going to drop a carbon footprint score to a more favourable, lower mm. opex electricity in the MABR. So yeah, mm. it was going to be one of my questions: Does the MABR meet the same levels as the MBR when you were doing your um, analysis? Yeah, and, and that's the expectation, <coughs> and that's part of why they're doing the trial. Mm. The expectation is yes, mm. but they, they, it's early days, but mm. Mm. we that's definitely that, that, <coughs> that technology would just replace the MBR that we yeah. talk about in here, and we're expecting similar type quality, yep. and, and and you'll get to that 10, what do they call it, 10 to the 4 log removal of... Um, pathogens and things like that so mm. quite a big st step forward on on the the log sort of removal we get from our current plant just in terms of steps forward could i i'll just seek some um feedback maybe useful for the group where are we at with our um gaining e weeks or happy acceptance of um this and the, the process to getting towards i know we're saying we're keen to move this on and it, you know the, the drawn out nature um, that we're at. At what what point are we going to be ready to submit this um, application? And how far are we on the journey with um, Hapu? Do, do you want me to talk, Steve? Yeah. 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 I mean, we really, really do want to explore this. This because. Um, a lot of our other designs that were done by PDP were very, very high level, but now this one we're looking at with the designer and um, his associate professor he works with for the for the um, the slow slow what's it called, Steve? Um, Sub the the subsurface. subsurface irrigation is really, really. We're working on that really hard because if we're going to offer up an op option we really really have to have a level of confidence that 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 it is deliverable and that's where and this one will um allow future reuse i know that's a question which i think john says you know um i think he was suggesting we've forgotten about reuse but reuse is something which will need uptake over time that's our view is this not it's not like at TK where we've got an irrigation society sitting on our doorstep, which we might be able to talk to. We don't have that. One of the reuse ones, which is still in the mix with what we're looking at, is the golf course, the irrigation of the golf course. And, and we'd like to grow that over time, but having the, um, it available so that it can be an uplift to people who are serious about a long-term relationship will happen. But, but this option we're looking at now is, is, is a detailed, we, we aren't looking at it at such a high level, we're looking at it at, at quite a bit of detail and because we've got to have that level of confidence that A, it'll tick the EWI box and B, it'll actually work, eh? you know, that, that it 
we could we could implement it. And and it's it, there are differences between Raglan and Barnui. That's what we're finding, eh, Stephen? Yep, that's the yeah. There's there's difference in terms of ground groundwater um, levels, which create a permeable layer. Um, so it's not it's not it's just got to work a bit nimbly and not and just and just yeah. go forth and, into the mist. So that's and, what and, we're really and, doing. And that, that has been a good thing about this consultant. He is working with us and he's work, this is pretty much what he's focused on, eh, Stephen? So we've got a, sh a short one where he's he's done a lot of work behind the scenes and modelling of how the, how the, how the um, flows would work through the, their way through the sand. Is, and that isn't just the flows, it's the nutrients of how they would work their way through. So there's quite a bit going on and probably next month we'll have, you know, some either positive or negative views and, but we haven't come back to Ian's question about when we'll lodge. You know, obviously, and correct me if I'm wrong, Steve, our target was the end of July, sort of. But but mm -hmm. if we've got to spend time and, and investigate this one, we really would like to and get it right. You know, we don't want to put a half-pied um, application into the regional council. We want to make sure that we've got a solution, which is they, they, they have confidence we can deliver. And the second part of the question was how we, how how's the journey going with Hapu? At the moment, we we um again at the moment we're dealing a lot with a single Hapu, which is the one which is Tainui Tainui, which is on the on the right on the harbour. You know you know right in the harbour mouth. There's there's an additional Hapu as well we need to engage with. But that I, th I think with the history here, this is this is the the lead Hapu. We just have to get and and, and the Māori worldview will just will lean on on them a lot as well. So again, with this, that really just hold, um, keeping they're, they're just great to work with and just listening, etc. But there's no until a business case is, is presented to them, there's no position given either either. I think that there's there's just um, they're saying, yeah, we know that there's we know it's clay, we know there's a challenge, but just think just. We're, we're, we've heard it. I mean, we've done this for 40 years. We know that the, the challenges are there, but where are we going with reuse? Where are we doing? Lots of things that are in common with with the with the wider views of, of Raglan. And so we're just doing our best to really um, get get it to a point where we where we're going to have to get unless we get 100. percent There's going to be some discharge, but it has to be uh, to some sort of point source. It just it just has to be. But in terms of where that might be and in, in a staged manner, when water becomes scarce or water take up, that's something that we can work on and show examples about how it can be used. The regional council will need some certainty with it. That's part of a cut and carry. It's very it's, when you get when you really dig into it. There's a lot of moving parts. Getting someone that might be able to do it. Who would who who would want to take the cut and carry responsibility? Is there anyone that would want it? And that's sort of we have to, again talk to I don't know neighbouring farmers etc. But again, it's just you've got to go for it. And that's really what we're doing. So um, trying to squeeze it into a couple of months. Definitely, definitely we'll keep everyone up to speed and we'll just work on what we're doing, which is sort of, which is going through the QMRA. We haven't been able to introduce the MA, MABR to the to the QMRA because we don't, because this is just an evolving field as well. Where does it, where, what happens with the reform? Don't know, but we just still, still have to keep working toward showing that we're evidence that we're not putting a sticking, not pressing pause on this. We're really trying to get somewhere with it. Hmm. I think that's something I can speak to uh, as well. Um, I was at the latest uh, Department of Internal Affairs um, briefing <clears throat> slash consultation, uh, they called it, uh, for the Three Waters reform. And uh, that is obviously a, a, a entirely different um, process. Uh, and, and we are very much not letting that distract us in terms of our progress forward. So. You know, some councillors I know are, um, one might suggest, uh, are sort of kicking the can down the road now, not spending too much money, uh, hoping that somebody else is going to pick it up and uh, and pay for it. Uh, we're not taking that view uh, and we're continuing uh, on at full pace and uh, whatever will be, will be uh, when that time comes. Yep. Ian, any other comments from you? I know you're actually... Um, uh, very closely involved in, in, in this project and the reforms. 
Yeah, no, I was, um, I was just trying to find actually the date of the next tranche of funding. And I'm also thinking about <coughs> how we can access funding to support this project um, with regards to whether it will fit into that new um, housing acceleration fund or whether we could fit it into the second tranche of um, reform funding. So I was just thinking about that. Sorry, so I just went off looking for that. But um, no, in terms of reform, I think it's all these are the issues that we need to deal with hopefully in the next year well in the next year or two to prepare us for that reform in my eyes so I think we're on the right path and it, we're ahead of the game in everything I'm seeing in terms of those reform across the Waikato which I'm part of a steering group for um, we're quite we're quite well progressed in terms of our approach with water care is quite forward thinking it's quite um, up there if you look at the risks we're managing and, and how we're actually focusing on compliance and the governance board focus on um getting that compliance we're, we're just right up there at the foot at the forefront of this so i think yeah we're doing everything we can and drive it that the work that water care is doing here is just is right on on the, the the direction that we need to be taking as an industry so yeah. that's uh, you know the fit is great but i don't think we can be criticized for what we're doing all right uh chris i'm gonna come back to you yeah, two questions. Um, one thing is, I guess you guys are aware of the Coastal Reserves Management Plan that's underway. And just checking, I'm, I'm assuming that you guys are kind of talking to each other because obviously we're looking quite um, at the use of winery reserve. Um, and that's obviously come up in that management plan and the community board submitted on it about diversifying and perhaps destocking uh, livestock and whatnot. So just checking that you guys are doing that. And then the other one is, um, yeah, at what time, and quite noticeable of the fact that our current local government minister is also our foreign minister but she can't go anywhere um but as soon <laughs> as she can um she might not be around very much so i'm just thinking we might want to tap shoulder tap her sooner rather than later it's it's a really interesting one and uh ian you might have a view as well uh certainly through this uh the three waters reform um you know she is uh she is fully fully engaged with that process um and um, um i guess whether we can we can try and grab her attention to say well this is a working example of you know that might give rise to some some of the solutions that you're looking for in terms of uh, community partnerships and, and actually looking at at uh, you know full full consideration given to uh, to uh, you know maori the maori worldview um uh, you know, considerations of, of mana whenua in this area, uh, as well as being at the forefront of of, um, of innovation in terms of technical solutions. You know, this is sort of three streams all come together. I'd be hopeful of that. Um, but yeah, I, I actually saw her the other day at at um, at, at another forum, and um, uh, yeah, she appears to be busy. <laughs> it was quite difficult to to actually grab her attention on on anything in particular. And and um, she's uh, it's been this source of an action on the governance board minutes for quite some time um, to get um, together with her to talk about the contract and where we want and what we're looking to do. Um, she was due about this time last year, and then uh, I think her husband or partner got a um, had COVID scare, so she couldn't come. And since then, we've just not managed to get near her. So there was talk of the governance board visiting her in Wellington, and I think that's still an action outstanding. But there's certainly the appetite to to get in front of her and tell her about what we've been doing and the like and then just yeah because we are out there at the front of this I think that she's very aware of where we're at um it's it's not lost on anyone our relationship no. and we also um you know on, under the um the old uh, mantra that no good deed goes unpunished uh we're also very keen not to be disadvantaged by actually you know running at the speed we are and and, mm. and getting on with things we then don't want to uh, effectively be dragged backwards to, you know, for councils who've, who've been less um, yeah. forward thinking and, and, and uh, haven't moved quite as fast. So we, we are, we're very keen for the Minister to be aware of what, what we're doing yeah. and how far we've got. Yeah, and also in terms of that, not just to be dragged back, but also to look for some funding with regards to the steps we've taken and so get it almost retrospectively. Well, we've gone out there and pushed the push the envelope here. Can we get some funding in... in um, recompense for that so that's certainly uh, we had a contract review the other day with water care and that came up 
as one of the actions. And I know Gavin's very keen on that. We're talking around the governance board table um, around that very issue. We've gone out there and spent money. Can we have some back? So it worked for, I think, Hastings and Napier got an extra kickback on the last, first reform dollars for what they were doing and we didn't. So it was kind of like, well, we need to um, go and have a go at that as well. So. Then reinvest it sensibly in the assets. So, mm -hmm. Hugh, did you have a comment as well? Sorry, I missed that. Oh, sorry, I just saw your mic uh, come off. Do you have a comment or a question? Uh, no, um, no, certainly pleased with the progress that's been made. And I know there was, a, I think I received an email from Stephen um, the other day saying they were looking at July for lodging the new application. But yeah, certainly keen to be kept um, informed as that application is being worked up and, and, and ready to be lodged. Thank you. Um, uh, Ella and uh, Edward, um, this is an opportunity for you, uh, Charlie, uh, if there's anything else. Uh, Edward, I know you came on uh, late, but of course, as per normal, we will put this, um, when I say we, uh, Carol, I'm actually looking at you right now, uh, we'll put this up on, on the web uh, later on anyway, so you can catch up on that side of it. But um, uh, anything, Ella, Charlie? Um, uh, I'll just have you know, just a brief comment. Um, you know, as far as the golf club, those um, we're more than willing and ready to sit down and work up uh, some frameworks with you guys. We've had some internal meetings, and um, so we're real keen to kind of lay out what what a vision could be, um, and that would help you guys maybe get some costings around that. We think it's actually not very expensive, depending on the type of um, approach that um, you guys want to take. And um, so, just so you know that that um we're, we're ready if you guys are ready to kind of get that going so anytime reach out thanks charlie that's that's great and with the um with the net with our special the new consultant that we've got on board he did he has got the experience with omaha which is subservice and also with the other golf course and and um power power Nui, which isn't subsurface it's done to it is um an irrigator which should never if it be a, you'd have, you'd, that could be a, an option depending on the on the treatment side of things. So definitely, definitely can see that as a as a reuse in, in the summer when. But again, we're just balancing it against. You got to balance it against all the options you have in, in the summertime when it's the easiest to get away with water and what's the what can be the best bang for the buck. But also balance against what's best for Raglan, a green golf. I would I'd hate for you to be swinging your big Bertha in the dust pit. You may need some green green greens. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> All good. good. Thanks. Ella? Oh, thank you. And thank you for the update. This is all um, very informative again. Um, one main concern I've, I've had is what I remember from the, um, well, the, the um, implications of the seawater rise. I remember that the aerodrome was one of the first areas to be uh, uh, subject to, to to flooding and disappearing, so not not quite sure how feasible um, the outlet for the, the water would be in that respect. But oh, there was I think I, I did just fire through. It's been covered a little bit in the regional council. They do have a have a coastal inundation model, which mm -hmm. which actually which is actually quite good. You can use a slide, and I'll send it through again. It just sort of slides the rise up the meters, which is which is happening and. And it's important for all infrastructure providers to cons I mean it's legislative we have to and so this is this is what we're doing here and it's and it'd be quite interesting you, you can do it your, you, you can actually do it yourself and blip, see how we're going and I, and and it does there is a rise but the that area isn't going to be if that goes under then we, we're in a lot of trouble it's not going to be it's not going to be one of the first ones mm. but I'll send definitely definitely I'll, I'll, I'll put it it's on my to-do list to to, to check in with you and, and to give you that link. All yep. right, thank you. Great, thank you. Um, well, I think that's um, uh, not very many slides, uh, Stephen, but quite a lot of information and clearly some progress. So that's uh, it's been very useful, uh, certainly from my perspective in that regard. And and actually yeah. nice to have um, you know a, a full opportunity for everyone to ask their questions and make their comments too. So it was a good session.
Um, yep. Any closing comments uh, from you, Ian, or any other final comments? No, I've just got a good session. Um, I think, yeah, bringing it to a head, I think for the July deadline now is just um, keep the momentum up. So, yeah, great to see all the stuff happening. So thank you, Autocare team. And thank you for everyone attending. It's really good to see the participation and testing the ideas, which is great. Good stuff. And one last esoteric uh, comment from Chris, is it? Um, no, just at what point do you think um, we can um, bring something to the public? Because I know that obviously here in, in Raglan, people are kind of like, what's happening? And it's like, yes, yeah, stuff is happening. Trust us, stuff is happening. But um, when, when do you think we might be able to uh, realistically, not, I'm not saying lodge the consent, but I'm just saying like start to actually um, engage. That's a really good question, uh, Carol. Are you aware Theresa's not here, of course? Are you aware of um, of a comms plan that uh, because you, Chris is actually right, um, you don't want to say, "Hey, we've done a whole lot of work, and this is the one solution." But uh, you actually want to, you know, bring people on a journey where they can see also the work that's going in, the questions that are being asked and the you know the the, the results as we go almost I, I know it's available on the web but it's mm. <laughs> yeah, it is. really it's not that easily digestible yeah. no. it's about starting to build that story now isn't it um Teresa's we won't have Teresa for much longer while she's on leave so um they are trying to um secure a new person to backfill her so it probably will be that person but I'll take a note of that action yeah, could we take that as an action point? Just, just a really good point, Chris. You know, because we are getting. I mean, July is just around the corner, and even if it slips, you know, a little bit, uh, Richard. Thank you for pre-warning us of that, um, softening us up. <laughs> um, but um, the uh, you, it's it's the right time. A lot of work's been done. Some of it's quite easily digestible, you know, in, in a simplified form. And then if people want the detail, they can go to the. Uh, to all the stuff that we put up, including all of these sessions, uh, you know, which are available. I think I think the main option, uh, the main thing is tying this last option down in this next month mm. and saying, is it a go or not? And it is a slight modification, but it is very similar to the public land one. It's just engineered differently. Mm. And I think we'll probably have a reasonable indication of that next month, won't we, Stephen? Uh, yeah, there's that. That's right, and I guess the part of this MCA process it was just to to get two or three best practical options as a first cut, just to get something to react to, and that's that's taking on board what we've, we've learnt through this and giving it to the community board key stakeholders to say this is we haven't pinpointed one, but this is where we're going. One, two, three community um, communication plans are common with all these sorts of hmm. all these sorts of projects, and and doing it in a way that is easy easily digestible. Um, and, and presented on a website, we're good. Yeah. What were you going to say, very, Richard? But we're very, very close to having the last, bit, what we feel is the last piece of a jigsaw, really, eh, Steve? And then, uh, and then yeah. we've got pretty much got all the information there, and we can get into the what Chris is asking seriously, and and have a plan yeah. around how we do that. So, to, 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 yeah, and definitely working with Ian, Keith, Ian, and his staff to understand how. I mean. If we're going to use, you can't just say, all right, public land, good. <laughs> There's lots of other bits yeah. and pieces to do it, but that's in giving note, giving that the waiver's there. If it's to do it once some council decisions are made or the ELT decisions are made, that'll be the case. If it's just to say this is still pending approval from this, we can do that. Um, I'll just work with whoever the, it's all in here. So whatever the yeah. ComSEM guy is, I'll be, able to work, I'll be able to pump something up. But to go to the... Um... But to start talking seriously about the utilisation of Wainui Reserve, we have to have something solid yes. to present. Yeah. You know, we can't just yeah. go up there and say we want land. You know, it has to be. And that's what we're working on. The, the, the airstrip, the Wainui Reserve and the golf course are our primary land land bits we're looking at in, in this latest option. Yeah. And that takes some talking to council. You can't just rock up and say we want your reserve. <laughs> yeah, well, you could, that you was my try. point earlier with the um, was coastal reserves management that that we're currently under underway in that process of making that plan. Um, so it would be good that the people working on that plan have a heads up that we're looking. Well, well Stephen, Stephen, you you can talk to the submission you made. Eh? Yeah, it was it was basically just some some edits that would favour the use of cropping, et cetera. And again, there, there has been, you're right, it's time to, I think, you, 
lean on Ian and his staff to just help have have, um, have have meetings and just and just say this is the reasons and and have and and let the ELT and others and we've got a great reserves planner Josh and a great reserve, um, parks manager very understanding so we can have those talks and we will. And, and from a regional council perspective, you know, I'd like to just plug again, you know, reuse of the wastewater. Um, we've got various examples around the region where district councils are reusing the water. Kinloch have just put in a um, subsurface irrigation system at the, the golf course adjacent to the wastewater treatment plant. So we do have recent examples of, of you know, uh, reuse uh, options happening in the region. Yep. Thanks. Thanks, um, Hugh. And, it's, and part of my part of doing the, managing this property is to start having some, some more hearty prep conversations with the regional council. So I'll, I'll start doing that. It's a really useful and positive way to finish. So um, thank you, everyone. Really appreciate that. And uh, we're doing well with our monthly schedule. Let's see how this new Monday night slot goes. And we'll, uh, we'll see you back in a month. Right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. I'll be there on time next time. <laughs> see you. Good on you, everyone. See ya. Right, I'm going to stop recording, Carol. Yep, I'll um, get that loaded. Records, I've saved.